Hi, I'm Al Williams. I use Linux and I've used it for a number of years, not to mention used Unix before that. And unfortunately, you still have to run Windows every once in a while. There's just no way around it. So I'm always looking for better ways to run virtual copies of Windows. Sure, Wine, Crossover Office, Proton, there's always a way to run most things under Linux, but sometimes you really do need a genuine copy of Windows running. So what do you do? Well, clearly I have quite a bit of RAM and it's a pretty stout processor. So you could just run a virtual machine and that's great, but it does consume a lot of resources. And those are resources that most of the time you'd rather do something else with. Also, I always find it annoying to have screens popping up uh, with windows in them, uh, you know, just on my desktop somewhere. So I kind of like to have it isolated. I've played over the years with a lot of virtual desktop type affairs where one virtual desktop would be isolated to Windows. But lately I've been experimenting with something that's really pretty interesting and I wanted to share it. So I use the KDE desktop, as you can probably tell, um, with plasma widgets. And I've got the Latte uh, dock down here, which is pretty customized. But one of the things that KDE can do is it has kind of a super virtual desktop setup called activities. And you don't see that used very often. But if you right click on your desktop, you can see that it will have a thing on here about show activity switcher. And you can also use a lot of widgets for that that you can put on your desktop or on a sidebar. So like down here, I have a pager for... Uh, the activities that I go down to this corner and pull up. You can also associate keyboard shortcuts with the activities. So I don't want to turn this into a tutorial on activities, but the point is, is I can switch activities and get into an entirely different desktop environment, different wallpaper, different uh, menus, you know, anything that you want different. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick my Windows 11 activity. And what you're going to see is initially VirtualBox just immediately starts loading up. And I don't run this in full screen. You'll see why in a second. But I do have it set to where it's going to load Windows and into a large screen. And I have a very big screen. So it, it's pretty much like a full screen setup. But it gives me a couple of different advantages. Now, obviously, VirtualBox takes a little bit to start up windows you know i have a fairly limited profile here i've got it limited to like two cores and eight gig of ram and that's fairly benign to my system although you can obviously if you use windows a lot you can jack that up quite a bit so now i've got my windows 11 desktop here It's not normally this slow, but the screen casting on the very large screen rather upsets things, I think. And you'll notice I still have a top bar here and a bottom bar, so I still have a window. The Windows menu is far enough up that it doesn't trigger my Latte dock to come down here. But I can, in fact, still come down here and trigger my Latte dock. Or more importantly, I can come down here and trigger my Activity Switcher. Now again, how you set up the Activity Switcher is entirely up to you. There's a multitude of ways you might do that. And in fact, like I say, keyboard commands are very useful for that. I have mine set up to Control F1, F2, F3, F4, and so on. So... I'm inside Windows now. I could do whatever I wanted to do. I'm going to switch back over to my default desktop. And that's where it gets kind of interesting. You might have noticed the Windows wallpaper there. That was the other activity. But watch what happens if I bring up my system monitor for VirtualBox.
you're going to see that Windows 11 is paused. And so that is eating up memory, but it's not active. So the CPU loading is better. Uh, the memory can get paged out efficiently. And so it doesn't have much impact at all on my system operations. But if I go back to the Windows 11 activity, I'm back in Windows 11 instantly. Or very close to. And again, some of this delay is as it's recording the screen. So now I'll switch back. And you'll see that Windows 11 is paused again. So I have the activities set up and I'll show you very quickly how that works. If you bring up your system settings, you'll see that buried in power management, there's actually a setting for activity power settings. And for the default activity, I say don't use any special settings. For all the other ones, I'll say that. But for Windows 11, I will say use separate settings. And I tell it to run a script when the profile loads. And that script is win11.sh. And if you go back to the main energy tab, the defaults that everybody except Windows 11 uses says, well, when you load, run the win11 shell script again, but with pause on it. Now, obviously... The Win11 shell script is the secret sauce here. That and knowing that this setting for activities is buried in the power management. So very quickly. It's a very simple script. It's looking for a couple of different options if there's no options it calls start vm if there is an option it does a control vm and then whatever you tell it which could be resume pause shut down there's a couple other commands you can look that up in the virtual box documentation but if in fact we're trying to start that line will wind start vm and that'll be empty and that's what happened that first time when it took a while to actually load up for the very first time. So if you don't switch over to this activity, nothing's running, no impact on your system whatsoever. The first time you run, that'll happen. Now, the second time, it'll run again. The second time you switch into that, that activity, it'll run again. But you know what? That won't do anything then. But we'll still have it paused, so we need to resume it. And that's what this line here does, is if we're starting it, we also resume it, which if it's the first time we start it is harmless. But on the subsequent activity starts, that's what unfreezes every time we switch over to that activity. And remember, all the rest of them are calling this and telling it to actually pause. So that runs through and says, okay, control VM pause. This doesn't execute then. And that's why when we switch away from Windows, it goes into pause mode. Now, obviously, that won't work if you've got something running in Windows that you want running all the time, even if you're not looking at it. But in my use case, that's just not the case. I'll have Microsoft Word running because there's some wacky document that it chokes under crossover office or whatever. Uh, I don't have any servers or anything that I want running all the time under Windows. So this works really well for me. It's pretty simple to set up. Obviously, you've got to go look into how to set up activities and get your preferred flow for how you're going to switch, whether it's going to be on a sidebar, keyboard, whatever you want to do. But once you have that set up, it's an awesome way to be able to just say, oh, let me switch over to Windows and not really have a lot of impact on your system for normal operations when you're not using Windows. So that's it. I hope you enjoy it. I'll have more details in the accompanying post. And thanks for watching.